So this morning we have a team that has come from uh, different places, as I understand. They've come from Corvallis and Pullman and, and Bethel. And so we're really excited to see the convergence of faithful men and women who are in covenant relationship with one another, committed to each other, committed to the plan of God. And i um, super excited to introduce Levi because it's just been incredible every time he's been in Zion. There's just been a cadence of the Holy Spirit activity and uh, knitting our hearts one with another. And so we're just excited to continue with that this morning. So let's, without further ado, give it up for Levi Hug and his team. hear me now? How's it going, guys? Cool. Thank you, Lord. That was a good time in worship. I always just love being with you guys and just really appreciate how you guys just host God's presence here. Just feel at home here. And um, I'm going to actually kick things right off with, um, well, Let's just take a laugh break, actually, to start out. <laughs> we'll just start with a laugh break. We haven't even started yet. We need a break already. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Well, just uh, we're just excited to be here. Um, as as James said, by the way, there's like an anointing for beards here. Have you guys noticed that? Like, you guys have some you have some like good beards going on. I'm 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 kind of inspired. I like well, maybe I should grow my beard out. <laughs> James James was telling me earlier that he, he grew a beard before it was like the hipster thing to do. So he, he's like a trendsetter. You're a, you're a trendsetter. <laughs> um, well, as James said, that we, we have like a, a, I have a powerful team here, and we've kind of converged from, uh, we've, been, we've been out buying textbooks. I have a textbook business. And uh, it's really cool how God uh, brings these people into my life and they end up we it's a seasonal business but they're all like just on fire for God and so we do ministry too while we travel and do books and and so uh we're just really excited to be here and and it's just uh it's a really exciting time right now um there's a lot happening in the Pacific Northwest I I don't know if you guys are aware of and I just have you guys heard of uh Chris Overstreet anybody heard of Chris Overstreet so Chris Overstreet I'm like kind of partnering with him actually and he, uh, a few years ago, he was in um, Stockholm, Sweden at um, Awakening Europe. It was the first, I think it was the second Awakening Europe they did in, um, with Ben Fitzgerald and those guys. And he got caught up in a vision. By the way, I feel like somebody here is going to get caught up in a vision today. <laughs> Just say, sign me up for that. <laughs> yeah, you need some more vision, bigger vision, greater vision. Um, anyhow, he got, he got caught up in this vision and he started seeing um, stadiums across America packed with people coming to uh, worship and they were being equipped to do power evangelism and they were going out into these cities and doing power evangelism. And he saw this all over the country. And he felt like the Lord told him, um, it put it on his heart to, to actually start and 
to put on a big event like this, and he was going to, to start in Portland, Oregon. And so he's actually moving his whole family to Portland. Like, that's how, like, much he believes in this. He, they're moving this, this spring. And um, big transition for Bethel, because he's been there for, um, I think, over 15 years now, and been the outreach pastor. And, and so, um, but they're doing a big event in, uh, is it August or September? I think it's September um, uh, 2018. Reinhard Balky's coming, and Bill Johnson and Todd White, and they're just going to have, they're written out the convention center downtown Portland, and they're going to do a big event. So you guys are all invited. <laughs> you can go to Portland 2018 if you want to read more about it. And, but I just feel like it's significant what, you know, it's just what we feel like is our part. You know, there's a lot of things happening um, that we aren't aware of. In fact, I have a little theory about that. I have a theory that God's always doing at least 7,000 times more than we're aware of. There's, there's, there's at least 7,000 times more going on that you're not aware of. And uh, I just get that from that story of Elijah. Remember the story of Elijah? Hiding, a, hiding in a cave. He had some like Monday morning blues. You know, he's hiding in a cave. Any, anybody done any cave time? <laughs> Just like not feeling it today. Hiding in a cave. And he's like, God, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that's left. And what would God tell him? He's like, Elijah. I've got 7,000 other prophets you don't know about. Hmm. So yeah, so I get a th I get that, that's where I get that theory that God's always doing about 7,000 times more than you're aware of. <laughs> that's just good to remember. There's like so many movements around the world that we don't even know about. There's so many people around the world that are just encountering Jesus and we ran into some Muslims uh, in, in Portland. We've been going to Portland a lot. Um, we ran into some Turkish Muslims that were encountering Jesus. Yeah, like having like these experiences with Jesus. And um, that's pretty exciting. Um, and there's people in your neighborhood even, I'll bet, that God is just uh, reserved for this time that he's raising up even unlikely candidates like Saul's that are going to turn into Paul's. <laughs> Amen. And so, uh, well, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today, what you've already done. Well, it's already, it's already great. Um, before I just go any further, I'm going to have the team come up. And I, ha and I asked the team to, uh, they're going to introduce themselves and um, they're going to share something you guys want to just line up right here in the front. Yeah, just give it up for the team here. <laughs> Look at this thing. Start this up. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Neha from India. And uh, I am a third year student at the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry in Redding, California interning for Mr. Levi Hug, the most amazing mentor on the planet. He is the best. Um, I, I, I actually uh, was just asking God for, uh, for what he was doing here today. And uh, um, I was telling Levi earlier that there is such a grace in this house to take a risk with Holy Spirit. And um, what I like, you know, what we just did even uh, while we transitioned from worship uh, just launched out into words of knowledge and it is it is so available and it is so easy uh, with Holy Spirit and it comes from this place of intimacy and uh, I just wanted to release that ease to move with the Holy Spirit that ease to take a risk with Holy Spirit that it is available say it is available it is available and it is easy say it is easy and just this uh, grace to even 
uh, take a, like I said, take a risk with Holy Spirit and um, evangelize and share Jesus. And um, yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, yeah release that and say I am unstoppable. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan. Uh, I am from the East Coast, born in Georgia, and I did first year back in 2015 and just have been on the prophetic ministry since and met Levi uh, earlier this year. And uh, as I was praying this morning, um, God just impressed on my heart. This is such a powerful season for breaking mindsets, um, negative mindsets that have just that have held you back. Um, I just sense that maybe there's almost feels like a wave of like old familiars coming up. Like, haven't I already dealt with this? Isn't this, why is this coming up again? And I just declare um, that this is, this is the time today that they're broken off. That in fact, that is just residual stuff of the work that, that God's already done in your life. And um, also wanted to pray for um, sleep, for a sweetness of sleep. Um, I know that the, the enemy's been disrupting sleep lately. And so I just pray for um, undisturbed sleep, for um, brokenness to be gone, that you as you go to bed and you wake up eight hours later, just refreshed and vibrant in the Lord and release prophetic dreams um, over each and every one of you. So thank you. If you have sleep problems, just go ahead and stand up right now. If you have any problem, if you've been having problems sleeping, I'm gonna go ahead and pray for yeah. him, Megan. Well, Father God, I just, I thank you that um, you just, you communicate to us through our sleep and sleep is your territory. It is your ground. You own our sleep time. You own our night time. You own everything that happens during that time. And I, um, I just thank you that, that bondages are being broken right now. Chains are being broken in our sleep. And I just, um, we just tell the enemy, you have to go like you have no power in this in this area. You have no authority in this area. You can't wake us up in the middle of the night and tell us that something's wrong or there's something wrong with our health or um, we have to worry about tomorrow. I thank you, Father, that your grace is for today and that your your word is real, that your truth is real, Father. And we just we pray over every mind in this room. We just pray peace over circumstances, over worries, over to-do lists, even over broken hearts, Father. I just especially pay for um, just family member and loved ones and just for sleep father we just invite your sweetness back in your wholeness of sleep that it becomes just like we're children that we're excited to go to bed because we know that we're going to dream of visions and the future and amazing things that you have in store for us so father we just thank you for restoration of sleep over every mind here and uh, yeah just it, I feel like there's going to be an excitement tonight for many of you like, this is the first time I'm going to be excited to go to sleep. So, just pray that over each and one of you in Jesus' name. Well, hello. My name is Frankie. I'm from Northern California, born and raised. Um, I met Levi almost two years ago. And um, I, I give all the glory to God, but I really honor Levi. He's like a spiritual father to me. He, he really, really is. Um, but, no, I just want to... Um, just say like really get to know god for yourself like um what she was saying uh, the a new mindset you know like the renewing of the holy spirit it's not just a one-time experience it's actually a lifestyle you know um like our cities the bible says that our citizenship's in heaven and um it's kind of hard for us to accept that at times because we still live here in this world but when you're allowing the holy spirit to renew your mind um you're living more in your home which is in heaven because Jesus didn't say um, the kingdom of God is I have for nothing. Let it be as it is on earth as it is, it is in heaven for no reason. Um, we're meant to walk in victory. We don't, we don't fight for victory. You go from glory to glory. If it's very normal to Jesus, it should be very normal to you since your identity is in Jesus. It, it, should, it should even catch you off guard. Um, you should catch the enemy off guard saying, oh my gosh, this is one of the Christians that knows who he or she is in Jesus Christ. So keep walking in victory and keep allowing God to do what he wants to do in you. Because at the end of the day, yeah, God does need us to use us, but you, we need God more than he needs us, you know. And a true relationship with God at the end of the day benefits us so much more. I come from nothing, like no morals or nothing. Me, like I was telling my friend last night, me being kind or anything, being happy, anything like that doesn't come from my mom, doesn't come from my dad. I come from no morals. I come from no Christian home. But the Holy Spirit 
that's my dad. The Holy Spirit is my comfort. The Holy Spirit teaches me everything. So anything, 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 if you talk to me, conversate with me, whatever it is, conversation with anything that you see, whatever character that you see in me, literally comes from God. Like that's my hope and that's all I got. And it's an authentic hope. Jesus is that real. Woohoo! So I was asking the Lord for a word and I didn't receive nothing. I asked the Lord for a word of knowledge I didn't hear nothing. But what I did think of was, Levi said I got two minutes. So I thought of Elizabeth and Titus, and uh, we, we like to stand up. So everyone stand up really quick. We like to laugh. <laughs> and so I, what I want you guys to do is just get out your barrels really quick. We got two minutes. Is this okay, Levi? All right, guys. For some of you who don't know, we like barrels, right? Jesus, he didn't make gallons, he made barrels, right? Of wine. So wine represents joy, right? Presence. So what I want you to do is get out your little barrel and don't be shy. And I want you to dip it in the Jordan River and get that big bottle of wine. All right. Now wait, the Bible says you must enter the kingdom like a child, right? Just smell it. Who felt that sauciness? just got heavy in here. Whoa. <laughs> wow, God. I feel the Holy Spirit every time I do this. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. So what I need to do is I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have a drink. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Now lay your hand on your neighbor. You say, neighbor, neighbor, have another drink. Have another drink. Amen. <laughs> Get wasted. Thank you. I'm just speechless now. <laughs> um, my name's Nick. I'm from Samoa, California, down by Eureka on the ocean. And I uh, gave my heart to Jesus in 2012. And I've never been the same, and neither will you after today. <laughs> we are here to walk with Christ. He's inside of us. We can heal anything. Anyone in this room that has anything that needs healing done, you're healed. You're healed right now. Anyone with healing needs, is healed right now. Cancer, healed. Deaf ears open, healed. Eyes given sight, you're healed. I just speak healing over this church that when people drive by, they're, gonna, they're, the right, they're just going to yank the wheel to the right because they're going to come into this building because they know healing's going on in here. Love is coming on in here. Everything that is good and glorified, purity is entering the room all the days. And then it's exiting into the schools, into the other churches that don't know about healing, but they're going to get it because we're going to go there and we're going to tell them about it. We're going to just blow it up with Jesus Christ. And I just feel that that's the word is uh, to be uncomfortable. That He gave me a word in 2017. Let's get uncomfortable. Let's get uncomfortable for Christ. Let's go into a church we've never been into. Let's go into buildings that don't look quite like Christ and then make them like Christ. Let's do it. Let's do something different. He's doing a new thing every day. Tomorrow's a new day. He's going to do a new thing. Today's a new day. He's doing a new thing today. So let's do this. Let's do it differently every day. There's no written way to do it. It's new. It's going to be brand new. Brand new in Christ. Amen. Yeah, Amen. come on. I'm going to, uh, yeah. yeah, give a word. Woo! So do you guys want to hear a couple testimonies? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview a couple of these guys. And, and Nick, I want you to you start out. Up? Yeah, let's yeah, start with us. So Nick... Uh, it's been like a year and a half ago I met Nick and um, should we tell him how we met no that's right okay. it's good <laughs> it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, Yoga. but but I want to sh- I want you to share uh, a testimony um, from what was it like uh, September. Three, September September of this year yeah. yeah so Nick's a race car driver yeah, he, race he drives stock cars, stock yeah. cars in yeah. at, at the California coast and uh, I went and uh, visited him 
um, about, a, about a month and a half ago, I went and visited him for a weekend, and we were just hanging out with him and went to your last race. Yeah. And he um, won like twice. You won yeah, twice, right? Yeah, I, I, it was just like yeah. killing it. The Holy Spirit won twice. Yeah. <laughs> he's crazy out there. He's a so. great driver. He's a great driver. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but uh, we were hanging out afterwards and this guy walked up uh, up to Nick. He's got like this fan club. Wes, from, like, yeah, Wes, yeah. And yeah. so this guy, and they're like, and he has like these cases of Bibles and he hands yeah, Bibles Yeah, that's another up. testimony. Yeah, himself. and yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. And he just like talks about that. Jesus with all these guys. Yeah, they just I have racing like, with Jesus all over the hood, a big cross. I have two race cars. Yeah. I let other people just get in them if they want to. Like we just, everyone can race. Anyone in this building, come to Eureka, I'll throw you in a race car. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And so, glory, um, glory, yeah. but this guy walked up, his name's Wes. And he, he was like, and, and he shared the testimony. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he'd heard yeah. it at that point. And he shared this testimony. So tell him what yeah, happened. I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So, um. I started racing this year. I started racing last year, actually, and didn't get so many wins. But this year, I just started off fiery, just started winning and winning, and more fans would come over and ask for prayer. And uh, during the race, they would actually come over and seek prayer. And I also have this, the Wesley guy, he would come over and help me put my tools away, and his daughter, Noelle, would help. And they would just hang out with me till as, as long as it took. Um, and then one night after a race, he comes up, and he says, Nick, 90% um, chance of dying, I have cancer. I have cancer on my face. They're going to remove my nose and my eyes. Um, and I'm, it's just not good. This, I'm not going to make it. And I said, not today. We're going to cure this cancer right now. We're going to crush it with the <laughs> Holy on. Spirit. And I just said a simple prayer. I laid my hands on his face like this. I said, cancer, you be gone right now in Jesus' name. I said, cancer, you have no right to be here. I said, leave cancer in Jesus' name right now. You leave cancer. You're a demonic cancer. You have no right to be. Heaven come right now in his face. Heaven come. Be healed in cancer. He cancer be gone in Jesus name and so after that prayer uh, I felt good and he felt like he had faith in and him he, that he, he would, told him to go go check the, go talk to his doctor yeah yeah go to the talk to and I knew he was cured I didn't even yeah you don't even have to go to the doctor anymore you're good you just <laughs> don't even get a checkup and so um, he go <laughs> he goes to his car and he's like an old vet, so he doesn't cry. He's like hard. Well, I got to tell this part. Yeah, you tell this part. Yeah. So, <laughs> so right after he prays for him, I wasn't there, but he told the story. I was. Yes, I heard so the story. Yeah. So he said right after Nick prayed for him, and he's an he's an old like uh, like vet. He was in the Panama War, mm. I guess. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Has a little PTSD. You can kind of tell he's like. He's, he's just one of those guys. And, we and cured that too as well. <laughs> yeah. Anyone in the room, you're cured from that as well. <laughs> and, so, and so he's, he's like, he's, like uh, he's telling a story. He's like, yeah, you know, he told about how Nick prayed for him. And he says, is the weirdest thing happened? This guy doesn't go to church. He says, I don't know what happened. Right after Nick prayed for me, I felt drunk. <laughs> says, I had an alcohol all day. All of a sudden, I just felt drunk. Isn't that right? You remember That's that? what he said. Yeah, he felt drunk. Yeah. And so then he went to his truck and then told him what happened. He staggered to his yeah, truck. Yeah, staggered to his truck and uh, had his kids with him and just started weeping, uncontrollably weeping. I don't know how long, but just started crying and crying. And out. he's like, he's, he's like crying he's like, out to the Lord. He's like, you got to understand, I don't cry. He's like, I, I don't cry at all. Yeah. I don't cry. I don't do that. He's like, yeah. all of a sudden I started crying. I don't know what was happening. Yeah. The Holy Spirit hit yeah. him is what happened. So <laughs> he started crying and crying. And then later that night, I don't know if it was in the car, but later that he night, went he home, said, yeah. yeah, he said felt something pop right above his nose and fluid ran down. He said, as soon as that happened, he knew he'd been healed. Yeah. Fluid knew, started coming out of his he'd nose. Been healed. Yeah. And then he went back to the doctor. Yeah, went to the doctor, said, you know, I need to get checked up. And the doctor said, you got no more cancer. I'm not sure how you did it. And he said, through Christ and Christ alone. And uh, <laughs> the doctor sent him to another doctor because he didn't believe. But he believes now. And uh, <laughs> that doctor as well said, you're cured. And I believe in Christ. Come on. And those both got saved. I know those doctors got saved. So we just Come say on. yes to that. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Thanks, yes, bro. thank you. Yeah. So good. So yeah, I, well actually, I'm gonna just have you uh, release. Who wants just? Uh, yeah, I, you, I, I would just ask you a yeah, couple questions. Show. I'm gonna ask Nick a couple questions. I, I just, I just love let's Nick. Stir, yeah, stir I'm like, yeah. So Nick, like, how long have you been praying for people like that? 
Um, probably about two years, I would You've say. You've been stepping out. Laying hands. It's, but you got to lay been, hands, yeah. you got to lay those hands Yeah, on. because it's some. I he even gave me, um, in Corvallis this week, he was saying to lay hands on buildings and cars, <laughs> that anyone that walked through these buildings would be blessed and glorify God, and even used cars I would lay hands on, and whoever bought that car would just be hit by the Holy Spirit, and they Come can on. never turn back. <laughs> so you can just restore, you can restore anything with your hand. Yeah. Because Christ is in us. He's literally inside of us, and he, yeah. he's alive. I want to ask you a couple questions. So, okay. Nick, like, when you're out, like, if you pray for somebody, if you ask them to pray for them, and they, they turn you down or reject you, yeah. what, do, what do you do? I just pray for them anyways, because they really, <laughs> the worst thing they could do is just run away, and they usually won't run. They'll just stare into your eyes, and they accept the prayer. Um, maybe you look a little bit weird, but you just pray anyway. Sometimes I'm like, would you like prayer? And I'm like, actually, I'm just going to pray for you anyways. I don't even get him a chance to answer. You know, like we, there's no risk. There's no risk in Christ. He already yeah. gave us everything we need. He died on the cross for us. Um, how so people some, feel sometimes, about us. sometimes if you yeah, can't get um, your, maybe if they're not, if they're resisting, maybe I know I've seen Nick do this. He'll just like bow his head right in front of them. Yeah. And he'll just start praying for them after they rejected him. He'll say, well, I just pray for this person right, Lord, no, <laughs> right now. And he'll just Holy start Spirit praying for him. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, on the way here, too, in Five Guys Burgers, I prayed for some people in there. And we laid hands on this guy's leg. And I believe it got healed. He didn't really want to try it out. But I know he put his crutches away when he got home. So that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to believe in faith. Everyone's healed. Every person you've ever prayed for Come is on. healed. Move on to another person that needs healing. You know, Come just on. keep going. Keep going. It. So good. Thanks, yes. Nick. Oh, just, just, uh, just if you want, actually, sorry, we should each get yeah, one. Just Everyone go ahead and stand one. up if you want just a, a impartation yeah, of it's good. just a fresh childlike faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Just yes, go ahead Lord. And just release it, Nick. Lord, I just pray over this whole building that there would be more children, more children. That we'd have a child's heart, that we'd have fresh bones and uh, fresh awakening and just, uh, just so fresh. We just say healing over the whole nation, and then just everyone that, um, just, just everyone's seeking Christ right now. Trump and Putin and the North Korean guy, I don't know his name, but he's seeking Christ. He's going to love, he's destroying all of his nuclear weapons. He doesn't love him anymore because he loves Jesus. Come on. He loves release Jesus. Your, Everyone's yeah. loving Jesus. We just release love over China and Japan and yes, Europe Lord. and every country, Antarctica. There may not be anyone there, but there's got to be someone in the ice. We pray over that person and just everyone. It's just going to be rocked by Jesus. And we just yes. say more fire, more fire, Lord, yes, more God. love, more compassion, more boldness, more yes, excitement, Lord. more excitement, uh, more racing. Yeah, let's more more racing and more curing of cancer and um, more curing of every disease that there is and we just heal everyone and more sight to the blind and um, more legs to the legless and more arms to the armless and yes we just pray over that and we we're gonna do it and and when we walk out today there's gonna be people that need healing and we're gonna take that step and we're gonna do it we're not gonna give up and we're not gonna we're not gonna we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna keep going and we're gonna say no to the enemy and we're gonna say yes to Jesus and we're gonna get loud for Jesus we're gonna keep getting louder louder for Christ and louder for Christ and we're going to shout with joy and we're going to have a joy heart every day. We're going to have a joyous heart every day. And we're going to dance and we're going to sing and we're going to dance for Jesus. And we're going to sing for Jesus. And if it's worship 24-7 um, in heaven, we better start now on earth. We better start now on earth worshiping Jesus and dancing and just getting in the spirit. And I could go all day. So in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Man, yeah, give the Lord a shout. Yeah. So um, I want I want Frankie to share a little testimony now. Which so, one? Yeah. So Which one? so uh, <laughs> these guys, Frankie and Todd, they just drove over from Ellensburg. They were buying books at Central Washington, um, and the, on the way up to Ellensburg, um, something happened. I want you guys to tell what happened. This is cool. Uh, just um, what God did. Yeah. Wow. Well, man, that was it was actually a week from today. What what time is it? Like eleven. It was around this time. Wow, um, we were driving. I never, I never, like, drove through the snow. Like, like, really seen it because in California it doesn't snow like how it does in Oregon. Oregon, oh my gosh, it was like a movie. But no, seriously. But um, I never seen 
ice like that like when we say like an ice patch we don't mean like an ice patch like literally the whole world like the road was solid like like it was like like maybe two or three inches and it was just like completely like like a hockey like stadium it was all ice and it was for the longest time and before we saw those other cars this is what happened to us um todd was driving and um when we were hitting the like a, a corner of like a mountain, it, it was the mountains, right? Yeah, it wasn't hills, mountains. As we we're hitting the corner of a mountain, um, there was like I, I think because everything happened so fast, but I think it was like a black explorer in front of a diesel, and out of nowhere, the car lost control. It just slid, like the tires had no grip, and we uh, we hit the side of the first car, and it broke the the side mirror of the van, and the and it and it closed it, and it and it slammed it slammed the the window, and it shattered and tarts side of his face and um in that moment you know i always thought like because i've been i'm not proud of these things you know i'm not i'm not like one of those christians i'll be like oh yeah you know i grew up this way i grew up this way like all these crazy war stories but when i bring them up you know i bring them up with a mixture of grace you know it's just to glorify what god's got me out of you know what i mean but um you know when i was younger i easily like <laughs> i say about five times it's been a long time i got shot at like five different times when i was younger like on my ankles almost and my face and my chest and the back of my head like i remember all those different times when i was young in california and um like i, I told todd like i was with this happened i felt more scared with this than those times when people were shooting at me when i was younger and um i always thought like when i would pass away i would think about god or i would think about my family but I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be raw with you guys. I didn't. What I thought about was like, I'm only 32 and I'm gonna die. Like my body went into shock and I thought, I really thought I was gonna die. Like when we hit the first Explorer, the car, the van went worse. We were like this and there was a full on diesel, full on diesel coming at 50 miles per hour. And we, we had no control. We were gonna fall off the cliff or hit, we were coming head on. And this guy was not hitting brakes or nothing. We were coming like we had no control. But Todd, man, Todd in the midst of adversity, man, Todd didn't go into shock like I did. Todd said, in the name of Jesus, no, no, no. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, no, no, no. And I'm not even lying. Like I never experienced, I experienced so many things with the Lord, but I never experienced something like that. But I know an angel came. It's either an angel or the hand of God came because all of a sudden we were like this sliding full on force, full on force into the diesel and the van went this way. And it was so close to the diesel that obviously Todd wasn't going to do that, but he could have touched the diesel. We were inches from it and, and you could hear the horn. We were inches and somehow we ended up straight and we could, yeah, we couldn't grasp like we couldn't grasp like what happened. And when we and we when we finally like got grip right control it was like all of a sudden we were like teleported seriously i like it's like i'm serious like i knew i knew i was gonna die like i knew that was my time i knew that in my heart in that moment but what i found out that it wasn't god's time okay and and I, um, the, um he made a live video when we pulled to the side because we were in shock and if you see the video when what how many views was it yeah, so the, the video went viral. So you can yeah. you can go share it. We we want them to get on like Oprah or something or like yeah. Ellen. <laughs> yeah. Go the, share. Go yeah. go and go. Uh, see see yeah. Todd's Facebook. Yeah. Did you see the video on Facebook? Yeah. How, it's got like six hundred thousand views or something. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. And I just want to say one more thing while before I pass it to Todd. Um, in the video it was so raw. It was like he called it the icing on the cake. What God did. We didn't even see the third car that was behind the diesel because everything just happened so fast. A lady, it was <laughs> Todd made me laugh because she was like a hippie lady. He was like, dude, she was higher than a kite. Like she, like, like, like she was, like she was like really stoned, I think. But no, but, but, but no, she, 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 she came like 20 minutes later and she came like shaking while we're making the live video. Like she really thought we died or something really bad happened to us. Like she couldn't live with that on her conscience. Like she, even though it wasn't her fault or anything like that, she really thought that we died. And and the and the explorer and the diesel never came back, but that lady did. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, he pretty much got it. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. Like, I know for me personally, that I've been in a lot of situations. Like when I was a drug dealer in Detroit, where, you know, I've been in a vehicle where I was going to be killed, and and literally I'd call on the name of the Lord, and it was like something supernatural happened every time. 
And it wasn't just like, oh, it was coincidence. It was something supernatural. And uh, what happened with us, um, I don't, I don't, I felt like John Paul Jackson, you know, like there was a time John Paul Jackson was driving in on the new, I was at the uh, Brooklyn Bridge and someone hit them and he was shot off the Brooklyn Bridge, but there was like 30 witnesses, a hand came down from heaven and grabbed the vehicle and put it back on their bridge. And when the cops came, they were telling the cops what were going on, but the cops thought every, all 30 of them were crazy. And so like, I kind of felt like that, you know, because like, if you would have seen how we were hit, coming directly head on, it was like, I knew what time it was. Cause it was like, we lost complete control. We shot onto the other two lane highway and we're coming head on. And it was just like, I'm like, not today devil, you know? And it was just like all of a sudden something either we should have, the way that we were projected, we should have shot off the mountain or hit him direct on, but somehow something shifted us into our right lane, which was weird because it like, I heard a whoosh, and all of a sudden doosh. And I remember going like this really hard. I was like, how did that happen? And was like Psh, glass in my face, but I didn't get cut or nothing. But it was just like, it's that name, you know, it's that powerful, powerful name. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you guys just to say a prayer, Todd or Frankie, yeah. and just uh, a prayer of just divine protection. Yeah. And in, especially anybody that deals with fear, I just feel like even if you actually have been tormented by fear, yeah. I want you to stand up. It just just any fear. I feel like there's a grace on this testimony, yeah. just for uh, like Psalm 91, yeah. just protection, and that the Lord is like your protector. I'm just going to ask Todd, do you want to just, sure. minis- just yeah. do something with that? Yeah, it says, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into him and are safe. And Father, we thank you for your righteousness, Lord, that we can run into you, God, and that we can call on the name of the Lord, and we shall be saved. That when we're going through situations, God, that we can rely on you, Lord, that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide. And Lord, that you will draw us unto you. And there are going to be situations where we might be feeling fear or anxiety, Lord, but Lord, Your mighty hand will come and deliver us, though. It says, though the righteous may have many trials, the Lord delivers them from them all. And, Lord, that when we call on the name of the Lord, you pull us away from adversity, Lord, and you save us. So, Lord, I just break fear, anxiety, foreboding spirits, any spirit that would kind of torment to say, hey, you're going to die today, or something's going to go wrong, or this plan's going wrong. We break it. We say no. We say yes to the plans of the Lord. We say protection and guidance over your people in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord. Yeah, just give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it's crazy. So good. Wow. So thankful. Thankful that you guys are here. <laughs> so good. Neha, go for it. Um, yeah, um, I was, um, I always tell Leva, like, it is always my heart to um, honor um, pastors and leaders wherever I go because um, I feel like pastors and leaders in any community are such pioneers. And um, I, the charismatic move of God in my city actually happened because of what my great grandparents pioneered in my city. And so I, I kind of have such a value for leaders and pastors and pioneers. And so I just wanted to um, honor Pastor um, John and Chris. Uh, so if you could stand, yeah. Um, and I just see this um, beautiful family that you've created, even in um, uh, as a church. But it's 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 such a family that you have pioneered and created, such a big family. And um, um, yeah, I just I just feel like you just stretch your hands out to him as she's prophesying. Yeah. Uh, both of you carry such a grace to create family to create um, a bond of love and honor uh, in this community. And you have pioneered, you've actually pioneered a family. And I want to honor, I want to honor you for everything that you've, you've done uh, through the years and for the way you've, you've just paved the way for so many to walk into a family. And uh, for even for hearts longing to be seen, hearts longing to be known and heard, they find a safe place in this in this house uh, because of the way you've created family in this place. And I want to honor the two of you for doing that. And um, 
I really feel like you guys carry such a heart for uh, for reaching the lost and uh, for missions even. Um, um, and I feel like even pioneers for missions are going to be sent out from this house. So I just pray for an increase. I pray for an increase of of, of just everything that you're doing, God, in this house. God, I thank you, Father, for increase in Jesus' name, even in sending out pioneers for where there is harvest, God, that you are sending out pioneers who are building families as you've built in this place, Father God. I just thank you. I hear, like, so many nations. I, I, I just feel like the influence of, um, of, of, of lives that you are cultivating in this place is going to reach, like, so many nations. Like, so many nations are being touched by what you're doing, by, by your faithfulness, by the faithfulness, and by your yes. Even by your yes, just one yes that you have continued for so many years, for so many years, and you're still so faithful with what God has given you. You've stewarded everything that, you've, that, that God has given you. And the influence of that yes is heard in so many nations, so many nations. And I just want to honor you and cover you with so much more strength to continue your yes the diligence which you have been doing and I, I just I just, yeah I just pray for an increase of strength over the two of you in Jesus name Amen. thank you Jesus Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. praise God you guys having fun yes praise God um, Anybody can do this stuff, by the way. Um, I just, I'm going to share just a real sh short thing that's on my heart, and we're going to do some minute, more ministry. But um, something that I look, look at a lot, and I ask the Lord for wisdom and, and revelation on, is we just, bless, we just bless this one right here. <laughs> yeah, just... just Travailing, that's the travailer, travailer, yeah, but um, just, I asked the Lord for, to show me what humility looks like, because how many guys know that humility isn't a gift? Actually, humility is a choice. You know, there's a lot of gifts that some people are born with certain gifts and certain things that they can do, and, and even gifts of the Spirit are things that sometimes we don't have a like a say in who gets what, you know? They're just gifts. But humility, anybody can do that. Because the Lord says to humble yourself. He says, humble yourself and I'll lift you up. And, uh, and I just want to just release this that, you know, the thing about, the, and he says, he says he gives grace to the humble. Who needs more grace? And so I just want to share three choices with you that are choices of humility that anybody can do because the thing is is when you when you and you enter in and when you enter into God's grace things will come through your life that you didn't you didn't make happen it's like you might even do it the wrong way and it'll still work sign me up for that <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> it's like if you focus on the, the, the um, principle, there's a lot of principles you could, you could you know, listen to Nick or whatever, and you could try to do something or, or copy somebody else, and it might, it might not have grace on it, right? But if there's grace on it, it'll work. So God looks at the heart. And so, um, and you know, there's a lot of things that you could look at and say like, oh, that's humility, that's humility. But I want to share three things that maybe you haven't thought of, all right? You know, obviously there's some obvious ones like considering others, you know, just uh, honoring people and, and considering people above yourself, you know, that we uh, uh, are pretty aware of that are important. Um, but I want to share with you three choices uh, that I feel like are going to help you enter into God's grace. And so, and so one is um, the choice to be teachable. The, to the choice to be teachable. This is like a, a warning sign for me. If I'm around somebody and I 
and I, f- and I hear them saying something and I don't have a teachable heart. It's like a red flag. Oh, it's like a like check engine light. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> the e-brake's on or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's an inside joke. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, that's a, that's, that's a problem. And so I'm like, okay, I need, I need to go back to square one because I'm not teachable right now. Something's wrong. And so um, that's one of the things I really admire about um, some of the people that have mentored me, you know, people that have been doing ministry for a long time, like Steve Backlund, you know, he's been, he travels all over the world and stuff. And, and he's one of the most teachable people. He's, he's always growing. You know, he's been in ministry for like almost 40 years. And he's just constantly growing. Even his interns, he's asking them, like, how can I do that? Do you have any ideas how I could do that better? You know, just looking to grow and learn. And so just having a teachable heart, and that's a choice. We can all do that, right? Say, I can do that. And another uh, just choice that you can make to be, to enter into God's grace and just uh, choose humility is to just believe God. This is an act of humility, to believe God. When you hear what God says, and it doesn't make sense, or when you read it in the Word of God, and it's like, oh, wow, this is not my experience. <laughs> Let's just laugh at that real quick. <laughs> you know, when it, when it says in the Bible, it says, you'll lay your hands on the sick, and they will recover, right? It's humility to believe that and to act on it because and 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 when my experience doesn't match up that's kind of awkward right (laughs) anybody who's been there you know i've had some close friends that that died um from cancer you know that we prayed for we contended for and that's awkward right but in those moments what am I going to do? Am I going to put my experience, my, the word that's coming from my experience, the word that's coming from the doctor, whatever is around me, am I going to put that word above this word? Right? It's humility to humble myself and say, I'm going I'm to honor the word of God. Because who am I to say something different? Well, I don't, it doesn't make sense, didn't work that time, I don't know what's, what's wrong, but it's, but I'm going to humble myself when I'm going to believe. Because this is the creator of the universe that said this. So it's actually humility to just believe God. Anybody can do that. You can just choose to believe him. Wow, this doesn't make sense, but I'm going to believe him. I'm going to believe him. Say, I can do that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> come on. And I just got one more for you. I'm going to read this scripture here uh, just to tie this in. And this is from Matthew chapter 18. Um, and this just you can uh, this just is good for all of these, but uh, you know the disciples are coming to Jesus and they're asking him who's the greatest. And then he called a child, and he set him he set this child before them, and he said this. He says, uh, "This is eighteen chapter uh, verse three. It says, truly I say to you, unless you're converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven." What does he mean by entering the kingdom of heaven? Right? Well, there's, obviously we're going to go to heaven one day, right? But part of the gospel is you don't, have to die, you don't have to wait to die to go to heaven. Actually, you do, but you're already dead because you, you're dead, by the way. Just turn your neighbor. And if you're a Christian here, just say you're dead. <laughs> so, you, so you can go to heaven now. You can have it heaven right now. You can have the down payment of heaven right now. You can, have, you can have heaven on the inside. Right? If nothing else, you can have that always. No matter what's going on around you. You can always have that. It's invincible. Right? On the inside. And so, um, so entering in the kingdom of heaven is not just going to heaven one day. It's, it's entering the kingdom of heaven. By the way, heaven is not a faraway place. Yeah. You know, Jesus said it's at hand. It's, it's, it's the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's, you, can, you, you can reach it. It's right here. It's just another, it's just another, think of it as just another realm that's available. 
It's not a far away place. And so when he's saying, like, unless you're converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about, you know, he's talking about, you know, obviously our eternal uh, uh, existence, but he's also talking about now. Entering the kingdom of heaven now. Living in the kingdom now. It's at hand. And so this is part of the key for us to to see these miracles, to, 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 to live this kind of lifestyle, to get out of our mind and in the spirit. And uh, so he goes on, he says, whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I love how he says that. He says, humbles himself. He doesn't say who God humbles, although God will do that sometimes, right? <laughs> but you don't have to wait for that. You can actually humble yourself. It says, whoever humbles himself as a child, he's the greatest. That tells me that, oh, I can do that. That's something I can do. So what does humility look like? And so my last key for you just that I just have is, is joy. The choice of entering into God's joy is a choice of humility. And it is a choice. We can choose to enter into God's joy. And, um, and it, it makes sense that uh, the, the act of just um, entering into joy is, uh, you know, it, but I love that scripture. It says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And it also says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Like you can take joy by force. You could take it by force. You can choose to just enter into God's joy. And it makes sense that it's, it's, a, it's, hum, it's a act of humility. It's, a, it's part of humbling yourself. Like, you know, you can think about children. You know, it's easy for them to go there. But also when you, uh, the thing about when you choose joy is, when you choose joy, you, you have to surrender. It's kind of a place of surrender. You have to let go of whatever's holding you back from joy. You know? Maybe there's some bitterness, maybe there's some unforgiveness, whatever. You've got to just let go of that stuff. It's really hard to, to hold on to that and, and be a joy at the same time. You guys know what I mean? Maybe even some dignity, maybe, sometimes, yeah? <laughs> so I just say, I can do that. So they're just, those are just three keys that I want to release. And um, it's, it's easy. See, it's easy. God wants to just release the kingdom in your life. I found that the more I laugh um, and just enter into that place of surrender, the more happens. And stuff starts happening accidentally. Let's just take a laugh break. <laughs> yeah. Just press. Let's just press into that a little more. <laughs> Just, let's, just, let's just experiment a little bit. Can you guys experiment with me a little bit? Let's just, let's just try to laugh and enter. Now, it's not like something we're working up, but it's a choice. It's there and it's available. It's like a room in heaven you can actually enter into. So you guys, you guys know that God, a lot of us are waiting for God, but God is not, God is, God's not, God's moving. He's, he's, he's already moving. Wait, it's, there's, you know there's a difference between waiting for God and waiting on God? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of you guys are, have waited to, for joy for your circumstances. You, maybe you've been waited, uh, waiting to get electrocuted in the Holy Spirit or maybe you've been waiting to get hit with joy but you don't I have good news for you you don't have to wait you can actually enter in and it might feel a little awkward at first but you can get you can get better at this just doing it in faith that's how that's how I learned how to prophesy I just started doing it in faith I just started experimenting so just flex those laugh muscles stretch them and start taking it by force. Wow. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> so right now, I want you to just experiment with me. I want you to forget there's people around you for a minute. And I want you to just get a little violent in the spirit. And just, let's just, let's just take joy by force. It's here right now today. The spirit's here. All right. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let me just get that barrel out one more time. <laughs> this time I want you to put your head in it. Just. <laughs> just go like this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow, I just feel grace in the room. I can think a little clearer too. Laughing just helps. I've got a little. I got a little secret for you guys. Can I can I share a little secret with you? You guys are like family, so I'll share a little secret with you. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm preaching, I will like just. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I will like just like go completely blank and I just do a laugh break. That's like my go-to. And it works every time because like I just start laughing and then the Holy Spirit will just show up and it'll just give me the thoughts and, it, and it'll be better than what I was trying to do before. <laughs> Part of it's actually physiological, like your brain actually does better when you laugh. <laughs> So just need to take more laugh breaks. <laughs> You're doing well? <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, we love you guys, and um, we're just really, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think maybe, do, do you want to end with like a, a tunnel or something? Just pray for people. Yeah. And uh, I, it's, it's 1215. Um, so if, uh, if you need to go, I just want to bless you. And if you need to get your kids, just bless you. And maybe they want to join us in the tunnel too. Um, does that sound fun? Did you guys want to say anything? A laugh tunnel. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a party tunnel. Have we done a party tunnel here? Kids, you can run and grab them um, and bring them back. What's that? But don't run. It was a figure of speech. What walks and parents I've heard runs and children, so I think that's what goes on around here a lot. But let's get them and let's, let's respond to what uh, the Lord is doing. Okay, let's uh, line up. Maybe we'll line up over here and we'll come through the party tunnel on our way out. So don't be last in line unless you want to be first. <laughs>